Real quick, if you're taking notes, uh, I got a really a message that I really am passionate about, something that I love preaching, not with just our young people, but just with people in general, and that is dreams. I think this world needs more dreamers. I think this city needs more dreamers. I think this church needs more dreamers to step up, really believe that God could do something extraordinary in their life, and when he does that, he'll get all the glory, and all the church will start to expand and move, and your life will get taken to a whole level you never, ever would imagine. And I believe that what a greater opportunity it's starting 2018 by asking God to take your life to a level, take, take your life to a place you never thought it would go. But it first starts by asking him for a big dream because he is a big God. So I'm excited. If you're taking notes, the message is a dream that drives you. A dream that drives you. And I'm going to be in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23. We're going Old Testament today. And we're going to start in verse 8 and we're going to go through 10. Quick verses I want to share with you. And I love this passage. I love this story. And this this. This man named Eleazar, he shows what it means to really fight for your dream, to really have an attitude of taking life and going in attack mode in life and not being passive and not being someone who just waits for life to come, for things to come their way. But he goes out and takes what's his. And I want to just read real quick, starting in verse 8. It starts like this. It says, these are the names of David's mighty warriors. Joshua Bashibeth, a Tekimonite, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 800 men whom he killed in one encounter. So you're going to get an idea of who these guys were. These guys were nothing to play with. These are the best of the best. And here's Eleazar. It says, next to him was Eleazar, son of Dodai the Ahohite. As one of the three mighty warriors, he was with David when they taunted the Philistine gathered at Pasdamnit for battle. Then the Israelites retreated. But Eleazar stood his ground and struck down the Philistines till his hand grew tired and froze to the sword. I think that's so cool. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. The troops returned to Eleazar, but only to strip the dead, only to strip the dead. I really believe that if we can understand what it means to fight for our dreams, our life, our year, our 2018 will start off on a fast track. Our 2018 will start with, with understanding that a God dream can take your life, can give you a drive for your life, that you would get up in the morning and understand what you're here on earth to do, that you have a purpose, that you have a plan, that God wants to take your life to new heights. So let's pray and believe that God is going to speak to us in this moment. Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would just be in this place. You've already done such an incredible work at our 9 a.m. service, God. You, people, so many people saved, so many people uh, rededicating their passion to follow after you, to dream again, to dream big dreams, not to be scared, not to be, uh, not to be moved by the unshakable, God, but, but to really follow after you. And I pray in this service the same thing would happen, Lord, that your spirit would move and your spirit would come upon your people and really bring fresh dreams, big dreams into their lives. Maybe some people here today and they've given up on their dreams. And they feel like they can't do it anymore. And they feel like you, you left them, God. I feel like you're be reminded that you are with them, God. That if you are formed, nothing could be against them, Lord Jesus. And they can leave here with a fresh start, with a head start into their dream for 2018. So, Lord, we love you and we thank you. And everybody said, amen, amen. So as I was thinking about this teaching, I looked up some dreamers on the internet. I was like, who are some famous dreamers that can really inspire us? And I thought of this story of the Wright brothers. I love their story. I love what they did. Over, over 100 years ago in a small town of Dayton, Ohio, two guys with unlikely names, Wilbur and Orville, uh, had a dream. They had, a, they had great dreams. You want to name your kids or, Orville and Wilbur? It's phenomenal. It's great. Some ideas right there. But these guys, they didn't have a high school education. They, they learned how to engineer on their own. They didn't really have a formal education. But they had a dream. And I think when you have a dream in your life, it doesn't matter what is around you. It doesn't matter what you don't have. As long as you have a dream, it could take you places you never thought. And they had a dream, and that dream was to be the first people on the planet to take flight and to build a machine that can actually do that. Crazy dream in, in the 1900s. I mean, you can't even imagine what people thought. And, of course, our idea was met with, with judgment and, and callous, and people were like, well, okay, this is the 1900s. No way no one's going to fly. No one's going to even be able to play this unheard of. That's the thing. They, not only did they have everything against them, they were broke. They, uh, they had failed attempts. They were guys that they tried and they tried, but they kept failing after failure. But it's one of those things where they had a dream 
that they just couldn't escape. They had a dream that they just couldn't let go. They had a dream that stuck with them. It became their identity. It became who they were. And a dream will do that to you. You see, their dream was flight, and their destiny was its fulfillment. They had to see it happen. They had their life dependent on it. I love it. that And at that time, there was people also trying to create flight. And actually, the U.S. Army at that time in 1903 got pretty close, but they couldn't really figure out the aerodynamics. They couldn't figure the mechanics of actually building, uh, building a fully functioning airplane. And it's crazy. The New York Times was like, okay, all these people are trying to do this. This is impossible. And there was a famous article in the New York Times at that, at, during that time period, and it said that we might see some people fly. We might see an airplane a million to 10 million years from now. A million to 10 million years from now. Not, not 10 years, not 100 years. A million, that's how unheard of this was, it's how impossible it seemed. And I love when that article came out, actually eight days after, in North Carolina on a sandy patch on a runway that was makeshift, Orville got in his plane, the first gas-propelled engine, propellers that they made. He took control, and they took flight for the very first time in human history. Article just came out, this is impossible, a million years. They did it eight days later. First airplane, first people to take off on flight. You see, the flight only lasted, it was only 120 feet, 12 seconds. It's not it's a, short flight, it's a short flight. If it was American Airlines, it'd be $5,000. But anyways, that's, 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 that's not what I'm here for. It's not what I'm here for. That's a new year, fresh start. Anyway, so it was a quick flight. It wasn't that far. But the impact it had lasted a lifetime. Without that discovery, without that dream, we wouldn't, we wouldn't experience flight that we have today. And the reason I share that story of these two guys, and I just, I just think about it. I start asking myself this question and I, and I ask this to you, church. If two ordinary guys with no high school education, no engineering skills, in a bike shop in Dayton, Ohio, in the year 1903, can turn and produce a flying machine, how much more can the God of the universe do with your dream? The God who created the stars, the skies, the mountains, the oceans. He, he created the intricacy of the human body. What is his dream to you? What, what, what is too big for God? I think this is the year where we just got to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to dream big dreams. I'm going to go after the impossible. I want to be another story like the Wright brothers. I have God on my side. How, why not? Why not me? Why can't this be my year? 2018, why can't this be my dream year? Why can't I break free from the mundane? How can I break free from the day to day? And I think really what happens is, I think we all start out having a dream, but I think we just, we honestly, we wait for it to come to us. I think we have a society where it's like a fast food culture. It's like, it's like my, it's my money and I need it now. It's like that infomercial. It's like everybody screaming out the window. It's my money and I need it now. It's like, it's like your dream. It's like, God, I want to be a millionaire right now. Please, I need money. I got bills to pay. I need to be a millionaire right now. That's my dream. And it's like, that's not how God works. He's not a genie in the sky where you can just ask a request and it's going to be in the, at your door the next day. You see, what I really want us to understand here today, what I want us to leave with here today, 2018, would be this mindset. That we don't wait for our dream, we work towards our dream. You see, going after your dream, if you're going to go after a God dream, it's going to be a fight. It's going to be work. It's going to be a day-to-day -day grind. It's not going to be something you just put in the atmosphere, wait for it to come on your lap. That's not how it happens. Your dream, it's going to be a fight. I love that. It's, it's any dream that is worth fighting for is a big one. And that's the type of dream this church needs to have, big dreams. I love that we have a dream team here on Sunday every time coming here in the morning. And the reason we call it dream team is because we have a dream that we're going to have more campuses. We're going to expand. We're going to grow. And we don't just say because it sounds cool. We believe that we really have a dream team. Everybody here can dream. But I think really what we have to understand is what is a God dream? What is, it, what is our selfish ambition or our, our, our really our, our selfish desires and what really is a God dream? How do, we, how do we decipher what those are? And really what a God dream is, it comes down to three things. If you're taking notes, it, it, the first one is that it, 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 it brings all glory to God. If you, if you want a God dream, if you want to know that if your dream right now is of God, if it's a God dream, it has to always bring glory to God. Uh, uh, Romans 11:36 it says this. It says, for everything comes from him and exists by his power, and is intended for his glory, all glory to him forever. Amen. Everything was created for God's glory. Our dreams can be no different. Our dreams need to be things that bring glory to God. And I'm not saying that you need to, your dream needs to have the Christian agenda all over it. Like, you don't need to be the person that says, like, hey, I want to create the best shoes. And instead of a Nike check, I want to put a, a Jesus fish on it, and it's going to be called the Jesus Fishes 2.0s. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, you can do that, 
But you don't have to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I, you know, it's just, you don't have to do it. And that's not what I mean by it. a God. You doesn't have to be necessarily something that is like, you know, it, with the Christian agenda. Really, it's just whatever your dream is, make sure it's not contrary to the word of God. You know, God is not going to call you to drop out of high school to be a drug dealer and then bring that money here to the church. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Your heart's in the right place. Let's just fix some things in your life. Let's rearrange it. 2018, we can start. And then we'll be good. We'll be good. But <laughs> it's just not how it works. You can't just say, I want to do this. But if it's unethical and it goes against God's word, that's not a God dream. And God will not bless that. And a dream that isn't a God dream isn't worth following. And you're just going to be frustrated. It's going to lead you to frustration. And it's going to lead you to, to just be angry all the time because it's not really your full purpose. So it needs to bring glory to God. The second thing is this. It needs to benefit others. Your God dream is, it's, yes, it's your dream technically, but it's for the benefit of others. You see, if your dream is, is this of, of just being of a material success and just I'm going to make money and this and this and I want to have the cars and I'll do all that, that's my dream, then really it's, it's not a God dream. If your dream is saying, hey, you know what, I want, to open up, I want to open my own gym. I want to help people get healthier. I want to help people get fit. I want to help people have a healthier life. That's a God dream because it benefits others. And maybe, you know, dreams look different for everybody. God dreams aren't the same. It's everybody, it's specific to a person. So maybe yours is like, you know, I've always wanted to start a family. You know what, maybe I'm going to look into foster care and I'm going to adopt a child. That's a dream right there. Or maybe you're someone like, ah, you know what, man, I've been struggling with this addiction. My dream is to be drug free in 2018. Like everybody's dream is different. And you can do it as long as it's a God dream. So again, it brings glory to God. It benefits others. And the third is this, it'll be bigger than you can do alone. Love that. It could be bigger than you can do alone. That's, what, that's the God we serve. He's not a God of little dreams. He's not a God of little desires. He's saying, hey, hey, I'm the God of the universe. When you come to me, come with something that scares you to death, that you know you cannot do alone because I'm the only one that will help you do it. It's got to be, be bigger than you can do alone. Look at what Ephesians 3.20, I love this translation. It says this, now glory be to God, who by his mighty power, our work within us, is able to do far more than we can ever or we can ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. I love it. You know what a God dream is. Now you need to know why you need a God dream. Why do you need one? You know what it is. You know that, okay, if I can dream of this, and this is what it's got to go through, these three filters. Okay, I know what a God dream is. Now, now why do I need one? I really believe if you, if you don't have a God dream for your life, you will not have a direction for your life. A God dream is something that in, it, it navigates your life in the sense of like, hey, I have this dream and my God has called me to do this. Now I can wake up and I can know that this is my purpose every single day. So if I make a decision, it's going to be because of the direction that I'm going, going towards my dream. So that's why it's important to have one. Look at Proverbs 29, 18. This is a famous verse, a uh, famous proverb. And it says, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't have a dream for your life, if you don't have a vision, if you don't know where you're going, your life will perish. And Jesus did not come on this earth and die on a cross for you to walk around aimlessly through life to perish. He came to give you life and life more abundantly to the fullest, to the highest. All we have to do is come to him. Get direction. God gives it freely. Why do you need a God dream? Because it will take your life to the next level. Whenever God wants to do something significant in your life, he will give you a dream. God gave Noah a dream to build the ark. God gave Abraham a dream to be a leader of the nations. God gave Joseph a dream to save his people. God wants to give you a dream to change the world. A dream for yourself. A dream that how he wants to change, how he wants to use you to change the world. That's the fun part now. Now we know what a God dream is. Now we know why we need one because it gives us direction. Now this is all we have to do. Dream big. Dream big. You know what a God dream is. You know why you need one. The fun part is go crazy. Think of something, the, cra the craziest thing you can think of, and go before God. Ask him to see if he can help you with it. Ask him to see if it lines up with it. Feel peace about it and go crazy. Don't overestimate your dream because you will underestimate your God. Don't overestimate it. Dream big. Like, this is something I'm passionate about. It's something I share with our youth. But, and I'm not just talking to the youth here. This is for everybody. Everybody can dream. doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are. A dream can save your life. A dream can save you from just walking on this earth, just going through the motions, just going through day by day. Maybe you're here today and you feel that your year has been that. It's been up and down. It's been, I had my good moments, I had my bad moments, but I feel like I'm walking around aimlessly through life. Then my friend, let me tell you, if you leave here tonight knowing that there's a God that loves you and he's just, asking, he's just waiting for you to ask him for a dream, then you're going to leave here with purpose. You're going to leave here with direction. 
That's what I'm praying for in 2018, that this church, people in here would leave with a dream. That they would leave knowing that God is for them and not against them and that he wants to give them the desires of their hearts and the dream that you have in your, in your life. doesn't matter how big it may seem, that it is nothing to God. All you have to do is ask him. And I think God is he's just going to see if you're going to, he's going to be seeing if you're willing to fight for it. Are you going to fight for this dream? It's one thing to tell God and just wait for it like we talked about. It's another thing to tell God and then show it by your actions, by fighting for it. That's why I love this scripture. I love the, I love the, 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 the character that, that, that Eleazar was. That in this moment, he showed us the type of attitude we needed in life. I mean, this is 2018. This is, this is a brand new start. We need to hit the ground running. We need to be in fight mode ready. I'm not, like, I'm not talking about fighting with people. I'm just talking about fighting for your dream. Fighting for your dream. And, and Eleazar, you see, I, I love this, this idea of, of, of him and, and, and David where, you see, the scripture says that Eleazar was with, with David. And this may sound like just a, an ordinary statement, but being with David, it, it, really, in other words, what it means was that Eleazar was at the right time with the right person in the right moment. That he was with David. He was David's mighty men. He was, he was one of the best of the best. And in the moment where David needed them the most, he didn't run. He didn't retreat. He was with David side by side and say, hey, we're going to fight this thing together. And this is what I want to tell you. This, this is what I really want us to get the core of. If, if you don't have a dream here today, if you don't have a dream for your life, get some dreamers around in your life. If you don't have a dream for your life, if you came here today, like, Phil, this sounds great, but I don't even have a dream at all. Well, get around some dreamers. Who in your life is with you? Who are you doing life with? Who do you hang out with? Who do you spend your time with the most? If you could just pinpoint the people that are next to you, like Eliezer was next to David, who is next to you? Are they assistance or are they a hindrance toward your dream? Are they, in a, are they pushing you towards your dream or are they holding you back? I think 2018, we have to make those tough choices. If we're going to really fight for our dreams, if we're going to really push and dream big dreams and big, big, uh, build big, big God dreams, then we're going to have to know who's with us. In 2018, we're going to have to make some tough choices of maybe letting go of some relationships that are holding us back, cutting some ties off. I think so many times what's holding people back from their, really their, their destiny is the people around them the people they sit with, the people they talk with, the people they hang out with. Because maybe their agenda is a little bit different than your agenda. Maybe they don't have the same ambition that you do. Maybe they don't have the same God dream that you do. And you're trying to go after it, but you're still stuck, tied up with these relationships. You see, I was, uh, I was hearing somebody talk about CEOs and, and big, big firm companies, and they have these huge buildings, these tall towers, and you know the main attractions they want in their buildings are aquariums. Like huge aquariums and you know so you can look at the fish and look how much money they got and that's awesome it's great make me feel bad i don't have any money i can't do that and you see in those aquariums the the main attraction the main fish they want isn't isn't finding nemo isn't, isn't a clownfish it's it's not an eel it's, it's actually a shark and the crazy thing about a shark is that a shark if you put it in an aquarium it'll only grow about eight inches but if you put it in the ocean it'll grow eight feet even bigger you see, the shark will never grow larger than its, than its environment. And you see, the same is about you. The same thing can be said about you. You could be in this life and you are stuck in the aquarium full of small-minded people, people that have, are narrow-minded. They, they don't have drive. They don't have, they don't have desires. They don't have a God dream. When God is saying, hey, it's time to get out of that aquarium, into the lake, into the ocean. It's time to release your potential. I have a dream for your life. All I'm waiting for you is to stop hanging around small-minded people. What can God do in your life if you just change settings? Just change the people you hang out with. I'm not saying you have to hate them or not talk to them ever again, but it's saying, hey, if I really care about this, then I'm going I'm to reevaluate some things in my life. You see, it's going to be hard to stand your ground in life and stand your ground and fight for your dream if the people around you, you know, they don't have your back. They're not really for you. That you hear this, that they hear your dream and they think you're crazy. Or they hear your dream and like, hey, that sounds cool, but why don't we just go back to doing the old things that we do? Why do you have to do this, all, this whole crazy dream talk? I mean, we all have, we've all had dreams. But I think so many times our dreams get stuck in the past. We still think of, our, you know, our childhood dreams. And it's like, I mean, let's be honest, we all had dreams when we were kids. Like for me, it was, uh, I had a, my first big thing that I wanted to be in life in preschool. We had this, uh, I went to this like really really awesome preschool and it was run by some Cuban ladies they were the best they were awesome they were great and uh, they couldn't say my name right but it was right it was good school I'm not bitter about it and uh, we had <laughs> we had this not bitter not bitter and uh, so we had this thing where it was it was like a little play 
and all the students in the class would, they would, um, they would share what they wanted to be when they grow up. They're like, what, what's your dream? And so they would dress up, and they would hand in the mic, and you would like, hey, my name is this, and so-and-so, and I want to be a doctor. I want to be, you know, a fireman. I want to be a police officer. And so they went kid by kid by kid by kid, and then it got to me. And I get the mic, and I go, well, first of all, they say, Felix, you want to go? And like, my name is Philip, and so they say Felix. <laughs> Felix is my Cuban name. I just accepted it. And um, I want to call me Felix. It's okay. I, I, embrace it. I embrace it. And so they, you know, so they get to me. I get the mic, and I go, I want to be a farmer. Like, I just wanted to be a farmer. I don't know. I, I couldn't think of anything on the spot. I like animals. And so that was my dream. That was it. I just wanted to be a farmer, you know, hang out with some cows, raise some chickens, you know, do ministry for the animals. And just, that was it. That was my dream. But I'm not talking about childish dreams. I'm talking about a God dream. And these are the ones that, like, it, it's, 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 it's something where it changes your life completely. But you have to have somebody in your life that's going to push you towards your destiny. Not keep you in your childish ways, but say, hey, you got a God dream? What can I do to help you? What can I do to protect you? What can I do to keep you accountable? Because there are going to be things in this life that are going to try to redirect you, reroute you. Get some friends that have the same dream as you. Get some dreamers around you. And I love that. The Eleazar with David, he stood his ground. All of Israel, the, the Israelites retreated. They, they were like, okay, these guys are too much. I'm out. But David and Eleazar stood their ground. Notice, while well, everybody was running this way, everybody was running away, Eleazar, he didn't, he, he, didn't, he didn't call back. He didn't turn around and say, hey, guys, where are you going? Come back. We need your help. He was just like, I just found out who has my back in life and who doesn't, and I'm ready to fight. Me and David, it has to be, and that's the thing, in your dream, there's going to be people going the opposite direction of your dream, and you have a choice. Life is full of choice, and the choice you have to make is, are you going to retreat with everybody else, or are you going to stand your ground even if you're the only one? You're going to stand your ground even if you're the only one. Even if the only one that you believe in your dream, if God has put a dream in your heart and no one else believes in it except you, you better be able to stand your ground and say, hey, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm standing my ground. I'm going to fight for my dream because God has brought me this dream. Stand your ground. Love that. He didn't, he didn't falter. He didn't move. He was like, I'm, I'm going to fight this. We're outnumbered. It looks difficult. It looks impossible. That's what the Wright brothers did. They didn't wait. They didn't, they didn't run away like, oh, well, we don't have the parts to make an airplane. Oh, we don't have the time. It's 1903. What are we even doing? Let's wait a million years like the, the article says. So no, they, they stood their ground and said, we're going to make this dream happen with whatever we have, with whoever's here. It's going to happen. The same needs to be said about us. We need to stand our ground. But I think so many times, the reason we struggle with standing around, the reason we struggle with getting around dreamers and really with the relationships in our life, and I think we all struggle with this this psychological behavior in our mindset, I think we all struggle with it. It's, 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 this thing, it's a term called mirroring. So pretty much just copying what anybody else do, d- does. And we have a quote of it right here. Mirroring is this. Mirroring is the behavior in which one person subconsciously imitates the gesture, the speech pattern, or an attitude of another. Mirroring often occurs in social situations, particularly in the company of close friends or family. Now you can look at that and be like, okay, mirroring, I mean, it doesn't sound like a bad thing because it isn't. Because it's a choice of who you want to mirror. Do you want to mirror everybody retreating and just give up on your dream and just go through life like, well, I gave it a shot. I'm just going to retreat. I'm going to go the easy way. Or you say, no, I'm going to mirror godly people around me. Like, I love my pastors. I love that they are dreamers. I love that I get to hang out with them. I love that I get to work with them. They get to inspire me. Like, I don't know where I would be if I don't have dreamers around me. Like, I love that we want to go after campuses and after campuses. That's a dream, right? That's a God dream. I, I, I'm, I'm thankful we don't have a church where it's like, we're just satisfied with one service. Our dream is to have the best one service ever. And that's not a bad thing to do. It's great to have one service and do it with excellence. But, man, God is a God of, of, of the impossible. Like, I mean, talking about eight campuses and Hialeah here in Homestead and all these places, that's impossible. But it makes me, it, it makes me encouraged and inspired because I'm around other dreamers. I can believe it when I'm around other dreamers. But when you're around other people that are going against what your dream is, that are going against, that have no ambition, it's like, man, you're only going dra- to be dragged down. Your life will lose its purpose and its momentum. And you see, not only did Eleazar stand his ground, but he fought until, his hand, until the sword froze to his hand. Think about that. A sword freezing to a guy's hand? That's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can argue that maybe it was because the blood and the blood dried on his hand and it kind of glued uh, his hand to the sword. And that might be some of the case, but I really believe that, that the reason why Eliezer was holding on so tight to that sword 
is because it was the only thing that was keeping him alive. And he cared about it too much to let it go because he knew the moment he let go, the moment that he, he got tired, he took the easy route, he just gave up, he would die. What if I, what if I, what if I challenge this? This is not with nothing crazy, like super deep or super like, oh my God, I don't know if I could do that. But what if I just challenge this? If we could just fight with our sword in life. You see, we, we have a sword. Hope you know that it's the word of God. And it's, 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 I don't know if you know that. It's not, you know, I didn't say anything pretty deep. It's just, this is, this is it right here. And in Ephesians 6, 17, it says this. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then in Hebrews 4, 12, it says this. It says, and for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's going to be hard to fight for your dream, church, if your sword is so stuck in its holster. If, if you're, if you're, if you're, and I'm telling you, this is something that I've, I've convicted myself. I've, 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 I've challenged myself because at times, even as a pastor, I don't, re- newsflash, I don't read my Bible every day sometimes. It doesn't happen. Because we're, we, we have a tendency to just get caught up in life and things happen. And, and, and sadly, we can leave our Bible as the last thing on the, on the totem pole. But we can't fight for our dream if we don't have the word of God out and in use and ready to go. Like it can't be on your, on your desk anymore. It can't be by your bedside anymore. It can't be under your bed. It can't be in your car somewhere. It can't be in the track. We need the Bible out and ready for use. And we need to grip and hold on to it like our life depended on it. Because without the word of God living inside of our heart and in our life, then we're just going to be outnumbered. Just like Eliezer, he was outnumbered, but he knew if I, if I have my sword, then they, they can't stop me. If I can hold on to it, if I can't let go, if I can, if I can grip my sword and, and give it everything I got, then I'll be victorious. You got to fight for your dream. The word of God is, 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 a, is a roadmap to your life. It'll tell you what to avoid. What to, what to, it'll encourage you what to do, who to hang out with, how to talk. All these things in the book that when you read it, it reads you. But if it stays closed, then I don't know what to tell you. The word of God is our sword. And when we take it out and it's active and it's living, man, our dream is, it's got a lot easier because we don't have to do it on our own. We have the word of the God living by our side. And I also like think about this and this idea of that like when Eleazar, he fought all those guys, him and David, wiped all these Philistines. Love that the, the, the scripture says that. The Lord had a great victory that day because it was all from God. He used Eleazar and David, but it was the Lord who brought victory that day. But it says, look, notice what it says about the guys who retreated. It says that the guys came back, but it was to what? It was just to strip the dead. They just came back and they were like, oh, well, I guess the work's done. I guess we're just going to clean up, I guess. That's what you have to, you have the, you have the choice of, do you want to be a part of the celebration God wants to do in your life? Or you just want to be a part of the cleanup crew of what could have been? Like, do you want to start 2018 with what could have been? I got 2017 is done, and ugh, there's so many things that I wish I could have done, and so many missed opportunities I had, and so many mistakes that I wish I could go back and do and fix. And you come in 2018 full of regret, full of things that could have been, full of things that might have happened. Just like these guys, they missed out on the greatest victory. They missed out of having their names written in this book. And say, what do we remember them by? Yeah, those are the guys that stripped the dead. That's them. That's, that's who those guys are remembered as. Because they didn't stand the ground, they retreated. They, they, they lost sight of what God wanted to do in their life. Don't let that be said about your life here today. Whatever regret you might be facing, whatever regret may be in your heart. I think when you, when you talk about something like dreams, it can be heavy because it's like it sounds awesome to do. But two months, three months down the road and, you, and there's life happens and you, you make mistakes, you mess up or maybe you, you backslide. Maybe you, you do something you wish you, were, you, you said in, the, in January you weren't going to do. Oh, I remember in January I said I wasn't going to go back to smoking cigarettes. I, wish, I, I knew I was going to go back to alcohol. I knew I was going to go back. I was going to fight this sex addiction. I was going to fight. I was going to get my marriage together. And then three months down the road, and, you, and, it, and it's not there just yet. Don't regret what could have been. Keep fighting what can be. Keep fighting for what can be. The best is yet to come in your life. God is still on the move in your life. God is still on move looking for people that will take up his name and live out big dreams and give him the glory for it. But you got to move past that regret. You got to move past that all, all that mess and all that poison in your heart. I love what James 4, 14 says. It's one of my favorite 
verses because it, it just it's so eye-opening. It says, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Life is too short to live with regrets. It's too short. Tomorrow's not promised. Our life is not promised. But I can tell you how you could beat regret. I can tell you how you can get to your dream. Because how many know that 2018, it, it, it's your dream year. This is your dream year. You have to say it. You have to believe it. You have to live it. It is your dream year. And how do you live out your dream year? Day by day by day by day. You have to win each day like your life depended on it with your sword out, with, with your friends, with your dreamers around you. And it's going to get hard. It's going to get messy. Things are going to not go according to plan. There's going to be audibles. There's going to be sidetracks. But if you can go day by day, not focus so much on the results but the process, then your dream will come to you before you know it. I love that idea of winning the day. You don't win the, 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 your dream in a year. You don't win in a month. You win it practice by practice, shot by shot, swing by swing. You win it by lift by lift. I'm using football analogies because it's football's on I know. Anyways, but that's how you win the day. The games aren't won on Sundays. The games are won on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you want to get to your dream and you want 2018 to be your dream year, start tomorrow, then the next day, then the next day. And you keep on fighting. You keep on pushing. You stand your ground. You don't let anything shake you because you have a God that is unshakable. Keep fighting. You can beat that addiction. You can get that marriage back together. You can get your son and your daughter back in the house of God. Nothing is too impossible. That dream you thought about starting that business, that nonprofit, start it. Work at it. Keep going. What has God put in your heart? What are your passions? What are your desires? Really soul search 2018 and really look at what God wants to do in your life. And watch out 2018. It's your best year ever. It all starts with a dream. It's the power of a dream. Freaking get a God dream. We fight for it. Don't live with regret. 2018 will be the best year of your entire life. Best year of your entire life. I'll say this, I mean, when it comes to church and maybe you're someone here and you, you, you don't know what your dream is. Church is a good place to start. Just like the Wright brothers had their bike shop, you have the church to start, start dreaming your dreams. You have a place to dream. I really believe that the church is a place to dream, to dream big dreams, to be surrounded by other dreamers. This could be the bike shop that starts the airplane. This could be the church that does the next big thing, the next, but it starts by us coming together as dreamers, hand in hand, really saying, hey, we serve a big God. Let's follow after our big dream together, hand in hand. That's why it's dream team. If you don't know how to dream, if you don't know what exactly what your dream is, then get plugged in. Join the connect group. Take growth track. It'll come to you. Don't wait. You can actively wait. Like, you don't just wait to fall on your lap, but you can work day by day and ask God, pray to God, get around people, and he will, he will show you a dream. He will tell you something. He will not leave you hanging. He will not leave you out to dry. He will tell you specifically what the dream is for your life. 2019 is going to be the best year ever. You believe it, church? We're here for each other. You're not alone. You don't have to do this life alone. Can't imagine going through 2018 just, I'm ready for a dream and I'm just going to do it by myself, I guess. I don't know. It's like, no, it's like, let's do this thing together. Let's celebrate one another. I don't want to miss out on anybody's dreams in here. I don't want to be a cleaner crew in your dream. I want to celebrate your dream. I want to celebrate this dream. I want to, I want to this is a, a house to dream in. I can't wait to see what God does this year. Can't wait. If we could just bow our heads and close our eyes real quick for just a moment of privacy. Just want to give somebody an opportunity. Maybe you're here today and, and you want a God dream. I believe the, the first step of getting a God dream is first having a relationship with God himself. See, God, he, he, he loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to die on a cross for you and for me. You see, sin, sin entered the world and sin separated us, separated us from God. But Jesus came to wipe our slate clean, our mistakes, our mess ups, our mishaps, our, the things that no one knows about, the, the ugliness, the, the, the stuff in our, in our life that we don't really share anybody, tell anybody. 
Jesus saw it and still died on the cross for us. Jesus loves you so much. His grace and his mercy is for every single person here today. It doesn't matter if you've been coming to church for a couple years and maybe it's your first time. The gift of Jesus is for you and it's free. All you have to do is accept it and believe it. If you're here today and you want to start that path into your God dream, please make this decision to, to follow after Jesus. He will be with you every step of the way. Life won't be easy. Life will be tough. But you have a God that loves you on your worst days and loves you on your best days and his love never changes. And if that's you, if you're here today and you want to accept this relationship with Jesus, you want to accept that Jesus died on the cross for you and that you're saved from, from, from eternity, you can spend the rest of your life with Jesus in heaven. Then I count three, I just want you to raise your hand. I just want to see who I'm praying for and you can put it right back down. One, two, three. You raise your hand. God bless you. 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 Anybody else? God bless you. I see you, my man. God bless you, boss. Amazing. Awesome. Anybody else that wants to make the decision? I, God bless you. I see you. Why not go into 2018 with a fresh start? With a fresh life that only Jesus can bring. Anybody else? Awesome. Awesome. For, hey, for everybody who made that decision, everybody who raised your hand, I just want to lead you in a prayer. And it's not a prayer to me. It's not a prayer to the church. But it's a prayer between you and Jesus. You talking to your heavenly father. He's listening. He's excited. And as a church, we're excited as well. We're going we're gonna to back you up in this prayer. We're going to have you. Uh, we're going we're gonna to help you with this prayer. And it goes just like this. And it's repeat after me. And church, repeat with me as well. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Open my heart. I invite you inside to be my friend, to be my Savior, to be my God. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. From this day forward, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Lord, I love you, and I thank you. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. Come on, can we make some noise? Well, we hope that today's message has encouraged you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at calvaryconnect.com for more info. Until next time.